Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hello. I am AJ Hogue, the author of Effortless English. Learn to speak English like a native. Father of the Effortless English system. I train you. You. You speak English fluently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English confidently. You speak English effortlessly. When you join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, it's time. New Year coming soon. It's time. Get serious. Get strong. Join my VIP program. Commit. Joining isn't enough. You've got to commit. You've got to make a strong commitment. Commit. Don't quit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Merry Christmas to everyone. I know that our uh, that those of you who are Orthodox Christian, you still have Christmas Day coming January seventh. We can uh, kind of traditionally in many countries and cultures there were twelve days of Christmas and our twelve days of Christmas starting January twenty fifth, going through to January seventh. That's why there's a song called the Twelve Days of Christmas. We used to sing that song all the time when I was a kid at Christmas. Those of you who celebrate Christmas on December 25th, as they do in the United States mostly, hope you had a great Christmas, a great time with family, children, etc. We are live on YouTube today. Today is the day after Christmas. It might even be Christmas still in some places. Let's take a look at the time zones and see. Yeah, still Christmas night in a few places. So for those for those of you who are still celebrating Christmas today, again, Merry Christmas to you. Hope you had a great Christmas. We had, uh, of course, our great Christmas present this year were two babies. We have twin babies and we're very happy. They are our best gifts and we're super happy to spend our first Christmas together with our babies. We had a good time. My family members, you know, grand, the grandparents, my children's grandparents and aunts and uncle and, you know, they're all sending gifts to the babies. So the baby's got a lot of little cute clothes and things like that. Very nice. All right, let's get to our topic and then we'll come back to we can chat about whatever. Get another relaxed show today. But our topic is mastery. Self-mastery. And the fact that, you know, it, it's we're, we're at the end of the year. So it's a good time to think about the last year. It's a good time to think about 2019 now. What did you learn this year? What did you learn in 2019? Uh, what failures did you have? Right? You, you ha I'm sure you had some failures. We all experienced failures at different times. Small, sometimes big. Failure is nothing to worry about. It's nothing to get upset about. It's part of life. You know, we set goals. We have an intention. We want to do something. And we maybe we have a deadline. We want to do something by a certain time. And we don't quite do it. We fail to do it. So what? Okay. <clears throat> and this happens all the time in life. It's nothing to, nothing to feel bad about. Just learn from it. So you learn something. Maybe you get smarter. Maybe you learn something about yourself. Maybe you learn something about the world, but whatever. So examine your failures from the past year without emotion, without being upset about it. No big deal. Just learn from your, what can you learn from your failures in 2019? On the other side, examine your successes. Examine your successes from this year, 2019. What went well? What did you do well? What did you accomplish this year? How did you improve? What did you learn this year? 2019, wonderful. It's always great, I think, to end when you look when you're looking at the uh, the past year, 
to look at the things, just the blessings you have in life. So the things you are grateful for, which maybe you didn't even deserve, maybe just some good luck or good fortune. You know, like we have, our, our number one is our two babies, of course. But you have many things, you know, the people in your lives, the many, many, many things. So focusing on gratitude. Finishing with gratitude. So, for, yeah, think about your failures and difficulties, your challenges from the, this last year. What can you learn from them? That's the important thing is try to learn something from them. Then look at your successes. Celebrate those. Be happy about those. And then finally, gratitude. Ending this uh, review of the year of 2019 with gratitude. So we do that. I recommend that you do that. I, it's kind of a ritual I, I have. I just do it every year, kind of out of habit. And it's a very good habit. But then what we have to do is move forward. Because, of course, the next step, we're going to move forward. We First, we look back. And then 2019 is coming. We're going to look forward. And an important thing for looking forward, something that is very, 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 very important, is that you have to focus on your mindset first. Mindset is kind of like your overall attitude, right? Kind of like your... The big beliefs, the big ideas, the big identity, the big attitude or attitudes that you have about life in general. Okay, these affect you very strongly. They will affect every decision you make. They will affect all of your goals, all of your life, your successes and your failures. And so it's, you really need to focus on these things first. If your attitude's bad, if your mindset's bad, it's hard to have success in life in general. And one of the most important, one of the most important mindsets to have, general beliefs, general ideas about life totally, about life in general, about everything, is the idea that you are the master of your own life. You are responsible. You, you, you. Not me, not your parents, not society, no one else. You, you have free will and you are responsible. If you want success in life in some area, let's say you want to make money, no one's going to do it for you. No one else is going to do that for you, okay? I am not going to make you rich. Your friend's not going to make you rich. Your parents are not going to make you rich. Nobody else is going to do that. You have to do it. Of course, you can learn from other people. You can learn from other people who are successful. You can get ideas from books. There are many ways to do this, but still, you are the master. You are the master of your own learning. So you have to do that. You have to find mentors. You have to find those books. You have to read the books. You have to learn from the books and from others. And most of all, you have to take action and probably fail, probably make a lot of mistakes, learn about those, you know, learn from those mistakes, uh, analyzing your mistakes, and then trying again. You and only you will do it. Only you are responsible for your own life. Ultimately, you are the master of your own life and no one else. In English learning, you are the master of your English learning. Not me, not some school, not your high school, not your university, not a language school you go to. You, only you, only you. I'm a coach. I'm here to help you. I do a podcast, you know, almost every day. So you have lots of English learning with interesting topics. I made lessons. So you have you know, very useful, a useful method and lots of useful audios to, to listen to, to help you. But of course, ultimately, finally, you are the master. You have to do it. You have to listen to the audios every day. You have to do all of those hours of listening and reading. You have to focus and concentrate, not become distracted. Right? So, when we have you know, our great members, our great VIP members who are so successful, and uh, it was very nice on Gab and, and here on YouTube, I get a lot of nice comments. Many, many people, thank you, AJ. Thank you for you know, helping me. I'm successful because of you. But it's not really true. It's not because of me. I'm glad I could help, 
but it's because of you. You did it. You did all those hours. I know that when you speak English fluently and powerfully, I know, I know that you did hundreds, thousands of hours of listening. You know, every successful person who, who has learned English and you're, you're very, a very good speaker and very good at understanding, I know that you did a lot of work. I know, and you did it. So, you know, congratulate yourself. Also, I appreciate the nice comments. Very nice. I It makes me feel good, of course. But also, I always have to say back to everyone who says something nice to me, I always have to return the compliment because you are the master of your learning. You did it. You are an independent learner. You found me, first of all, right? I didn't come to your house and say, hey, you must use my lessons. You must listen to my show. I didn't do that. You did it. You were proactive, right? You decided, I want to find a better way to learn English. So you took action and you probably did internet searches, maybe on, you know, a general search online, or maybe you searched on YouTube, or maybe you ask your friends and they told you about Effortless English, but you did that. That was your action and your decision. Second, you listened to some of my videos. Maybe you got joined my free email course. And again, you know, there's some different ideas in there. I say, burn your grammar books. You had to decide to do it. And a lot of people don't. A lot of people say, oh, this is crazy. Oh, this guy's crazy. And they don't do it. And they don't get the good results. But you did it. That was your decision. That was your decision. That was your action. Again, because you are the master of your learning. That's what's so great about being an independent learner. You are the master. Right? You chose me. You chose me. I didn't choose you. And then you did the work. And then finally, you had to decide. You have to listen to the podcast every day, hours and hours and hours. You have to join our challenge and do lots and lots of hours of listening. You have to get the my, one of my courses and listen and listen and listen every day. The courses aren't magic. You have to use them daily. You did that. And you are doing that. So you are the master. You are the master. And this is true in all areas of life. And this is exactly the opposite. This is the opposite mindset or mentality from most people. The truth is nowadays, most people have a victim or a passive mindset. This starts in the school systems. This is why I hate the school system so much. One of the many reasons I hate the school system. They train people, starting with children, to have a passive victim mentality, right? That they train you that learning is passive. What does it mean? It means, oh, no, no, the teacher's the boss. The teacher's the master. You go, you sit in a class, and you must obey the teacher. The teacher decides what you must read. The teacher decides the activities you must do. The teacher decides the speed. Do you go fast? Do you go slowly? The teacher decides that, not you. And then the teacher gives you a grade, A, B, C, D, F. You are passive in school, right? All, all students. It's a passive system. It's designed to teach you, oh, I am not the master of my own life. It's not my decision. It's not my motivation. No, no. Somebody else tells me everything to do. That someone else is responsible. And you'll see this. A lot of students will blame teacher. Oh, I have a bad teacher. That's why I didn't learn. I was, uh, you know, my the schools are bad. That's why uh, I'm not successful. Well, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. That's just a bad mentality. They've trained you to think this way. Not you specifically. I mean, very generally. All of us were trained this way, including me. All of us who were in the school system, right? The same idea. They try to do that. And we have to break that mentality. This is the very first step. You can find strategies. You can find coaches. You can do lots of things to get motivated and have success. But 
First, you have to start with your mindset, with this mentality that you are the master of your life. You're the master of your learning, but you're the master of your life in all areas of your life. If you, let's say you're a young man and you are not successful with girls, right? You want to have a girlfriend or you want to get married. You're not successful. You are responsible. It's your fault. No one else. Can't blame your parents. You can't blame all women. It's you. You. This is good news, not bad news. You know, again, with the victim mentality, we also get it in the media. This idea that we are passive, that we are victims. It's so popular. Everyone likes to be a victim. Oh, I'm a victim. Poor me. Boo-hoo. Right? Because they get attention and they think everybody will, you know, be nice to them. But no, it's bullshit. It's wrong. It makes you weak, weak, weak. So if you are a young man and you have a lot of frustration with girls, I understand. I did too. But it's you who are the problem. It's your problem. You're doing something wrong. You're doing something wrong. So guess what? Good news. You can become the master in this area, the master of your own life. Figure it out. Read books. Watch videos. Uh, learn from other guys who are successful with, with girls. And you can change. You can learn. And you can become much better. Because you are the master of your own life. You, no one else will do this for you. No one else is going to do it. Certainly not women. Aren't, they're not going to help you. They will not help you. In fact, they'll give you really bad advice. <laughs> don't listen to women. Okay, because they, they don't really know. Uh, they'll tell you completely the wrong thing to do. But you can find from other men who are successful in that area of life, you can learn and you can become the master of your own life and make those changes. Physical fitness. Again, imagine, let's say, your parents. They let you, they were bad parents in this area of life. They let you eat candy and, and let you be lazy and play video games. And now you're fat and lazy. So a lot of people will blame their parents. Oh, my parents, oh, they... They didn't make me exercise. My parents made, you know, gave me bad food. Well, you're an adult now. So now you are the master of your own life. So now it's your fault. Now it's your responsibility. No one else. No one else is going to make you thin. You can blame society. Oh, the food is all garbage now. It's full of sugar. That's true. But still... You have to be the master of your own life. Society's not going to save you. Your parents are not going to save you. No one else is. If you want to be thin and healthy and have good fitness, only you. You are the master. It's good news. It means you have to do the work, though, of course. Right? The, 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 the price of this is effort. You have to be self-disciplined. But when you're self-disciplined, you can accomplish so many things in life because you then become the master. You don't wait for someone else to rescue you. You don't wait for someone else to save you. No one's going to save you. No one's going to save you in any area of life. No one else. You've got to do it yourself. You must do it. If you're fat and lazy... You have to do the exercise. You have to learn about fasting and do fasting. You have to change your way of eating, all of these things. And then you will become thin. You will become healthy. You will become stronger because you change your mentality. I'm the master. No, I'm not blaming anyone else anymore. I'm not. It's me. It's important also as part of this mentality, not only about success and what you want, but it's especially important to have this mentality when you fail. When you fail, don't blame other people. Blame yourself. I did it. I was lazy. I made bad decisions. I didn't know enough. I wasn't good enough. All of those things are possible. But you have to be responsible. Right. You have to have the mindset of, you know, own. we can say in English, own your failures, own your failures means 
Yes, they're my failures. No one else did it. It was because of me. You know, the first time I tried a business, it was like a multi-level marketing business. And I failed for, for, for different reasons. But no one else caused me to fail at that business. That was my failure. There were several reasons for it. And I, and I learned from that failure. If you blame someone else, then you will not learn. You only learn that you're weak. You only learn that you're a victim. Oh, they did it. They did it. Boo-hoo. You have to say, no, no, I did it. It was my mistake. It was my weakness. It was my whatever. From that first business, I learned many different things. I learned, number one, that I was kind of desperate uh, to become financially free and that that business really was not right for me. So I chose a, I chose the wrong business. That was my decision. Um, I learned that about selling, that I was not good at selling something that I didn't believe in. I didn't really believe in the product. It wasn't my own product. So I, I actually was not very good at selling that. I realized that I had learned how to do selling a little bit. I had some sales skills, some. But if I didn't have the strong belief, like confidence about the product, then I... I I just couldn't make myself sell it very well. Anyway, I learned a lot of things. I can go on and on, but those were my failures. And because I accepted that as my failure, I didn't blame anybody else. I didn't blame the economy. I didn't blame the company. I didn't blame anyone else. It was my failure. And then I can learn from it. And because I learned from it, my next business was very successful and still is. Right? So it's very important, especially at times when you fail, especially at times when you have problems. Also, you have to be the master. Don't blame anyone else. Don't blame anyone else. It's you. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame society. Don't blame anything else. Don't Certainly don't blame God. Blame yourself. Because it's true. You are responsible. You are the master. It's good news. And so as we go into the new year, this is the first thing you've got to do is to make this mindset, this belief, very, very, very strong. You know, as you go forward with your English, realize you are the master of your English learning, only you, no one else. If you fail, it's because you didn't do what you needed to do. If you succeed, it's because you did. I can help as much as I can as a coach and giving you some materials. Other people can also, but you are the master. You are ultimately responsible. So change that mindset. Have the idea that in 2020, as you go forward, that in your in every, every area of life, your health, your fitness, your relationships, everything, you're going to say, I am the master. I am responsible. Only me. I am responsible. No one else. No blame. No blame. I'm going to do this too. This is one of my New Year's resolutions. One of my New Year's goals is to make this mindset stronger in myself also because i complain too wah, 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 when things when i have problems and it, it sucks it makes it just makes me weak and unhappy right it makes you weak and unhappy when you do that so let's not do it all right let's get to our questions and comments now but we're going to start this year strong in a strong way Okay, so here's an example. Uh, Shrawan says, Hello, everyone. I follow. I have followed the Effortless English Method since last year. Now I understand 95% of native speakers. Fantastic. Fantastic. So again, I guarantee this person, Shrawan, in the last year has been listening and listening and listening hundreds and hundreds of hours, perhaps thousands of hours, okay, to get this result. The, the effortless English method works. Certainly it does, but you have to do it. And so Shawan did it and is doing it. Okay, so congratulations to Shawan because I know that Shawan is putting in a lot of effort. Shawan decided like, I'm the master of my English learning and that's why this great result.
Well, and Dan says, I recommended Effortless English to many people. But sadly, nobody used it seriously. Right. They went back to studying grammar rules and still are struggling. Right. This is what I mean about master of your own learning, that just the first decision to actually do Effortless English, that's a big decision because it goes against, it goes against the normal way. What are most people doing? Like 95% of English learners in the world, they're doing grammar rules and textbooks and vocabulary lists, right? That's what they're doing. And so when they hear about a very different method, like effortless English, they say, oh no, that's strange. Uh, even though, even though they are getting bad results, even though they're not happy, even though they're not successful, they will not change. Dan changed, but Dan's friends will not change. Dan is the master of his own learning and therefore will get much better results. His friends are not the master. They want, they just want some book or some teacher to tell them what to do. They want to be passive and therefore they're going to get bad results and maybe they'll complain about it, but it's their fault. Right. So congrats to Dan just by making the decision to do something different. That's a big decision. That's a big decision. It's very good. Excellent. Yeah, the price is effort. Exactly. It takes effort to become effortless. <laughs> that should be my uh, that should be my motto on this website. It takes effort to become effortless. All right, just going through. Yeah, like, again, Namaz with the same point. Uh, it can be hard to learn naturally. Most people refuse that learning. Right. Why do people refuse it? You know, why do so many people when they hear about effortless English or any natural method. Why? Because then they have to be responsible, right? This is, this is also part of the price of being the master of your life. You are responsible. So you have, you can't blame anyone else now. Now it's you, right? So you have to be self-disciplined. You have to be responsible. It's the same about, it's the same problem or the same challenge, starting a business, okay? It's the same reason so many people never start their own business or they fail. Because most people want to go to a job, so the boss tells them what to do. Here, do this, then do this, then do this. They want to just be told what to do and get the paycheck. If you start your own business, now you are 100% responsible. No one tells you anything. Nothing. Every single decision you must decide. Everything. What price should your product be? No one's going to tell you. You have to decide. Uh, what color should your website be? No one's going to tell you. You have to decide. How should you do marketing? No one's going to tell you. You have to decide. Right? Every single decision you have to make, you are completely the master. Now, I think that's great. That's what makes it wonderful. That's why you can make a lot more money and become uh, independent and you have so much more freedom. But that scares a lot of people because a lot of people are trained to be more passive. Well, it's exactly the same in English learning. Even though uh, effortless English methods are better, natural methods in general are better, but that scares people because now they have to decide when to listen, right? If you go to a school, they tell you, come to class at six o'clock until seven o'clock. You know, Monday and Wednesday and Friday. They tell you the exact schedule. You don't have to decide, right? And they tell you, okay, do this exercise and now do this and now do this. But when you're an independent learner, Nobody tells you. You decide how many hours per day do you listen to Effortless English. No one tells you. You decide. You can do one hour. You can do eight hours. 
<laughs> you, as we saw in the challenge, you can do 12 hours a day. Some people do, right? Um, should you read books? Sure. Which books? No one's going to tell you. Depends on you. What do you like? You have to figure it out and decide. But all that's good news, really, as you know, because when you become responsible, when you become the master of your own learning, the master of your own life, you will become happier because you get stronger and stronger. Every time you make a decision, you get stronger and you get better at doing it. And this is why you get better and better results. But a lot of people won't do it. A lot of people, they're scared or they're lazy and they just won't do it. So I know you, I know you all have the same experience. You try to tell people and they don't do it. Well, it's just that's human nature, I guess. Yeah, so this is a good good idea from Alex uh, was it T uh, Sihan. I heard it takes about 90 days to master any habit, to kind of create the habit. Uh, I've heard it's something like that, right? Uh, it's worth to try. What do you think, AJ? What three best habits do you recommend to start? Well, you know, this is why I think that like when we do our challenge, our challenges, three months is a, is a nice time period because, uh, yeah, it's about right. So... Uh, what you do is you make an extra effort, a strong extra effort for about three months. And then hopefully you at that point, it becomes more effortless, right? It becomes a habit. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to work so hard. So again, like exercise, if you never exercised before, if you've been lazy, well, then when you first begin exercising, yeah, it's kind of hard to start. Uh, your muscles were hurt, will hurt probably. It's hard to motivate yourself. And you need a few weeks or a few months to build the habit. So, right, you have to make a big effort for, let's, yeah, maybe it's three weeks, maybe it's three months, but something like that. And then, then it's a habit. Then it's part of your life, exercising. So then it's kind of, autom it becomes more automatic, more effortless. You just automatically exercise. It's who you are, right? Uh, you know, it's kind of like for me, for, for me, walking is this way. Some other exercises uh, I don't I do sometimes, right? If it's more intensive, but always like my whole life walking is just automatic. I just it's a habit. It's a super strong habit. I just walk, walk, walk an hour a day, two hours a day, whatever. And it's such a strong habit that if I don't walk, I feel um, I get uh, I get kind of depressed. I get. Uh, I, I don't. I get start getting upset. Like I, I, I need to walk. I need to go out. At least walking. So this is kind of my basic, basic, basic habit of fitness. It's not super intensive, but it it keeps me in decent shape. And then at other times, different times of the year, maybe I do other things also. But yeah, it's a good idea to have this kind of maybe a strong focus for a few months, build the habit, then it becomes easier. Yeah, so here's another example. Sebastian says, I started to follow your advice two years ago and my improvement was amazing. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, Sebastian. And again, back to you. You did it. You made the decision. You took the chance. You took a risk to try something new. And of course, you did the work every day for two years. So that's why you get the results because you became the master of your own learning. This is why homeschooling is so powerful and important. Because as a parent, it's the same thing with your children. Yeah, you can be passive. You can give your children to strangers, give your children to the government or some group and let them do all the work and do everything. But the result's bad. Your child gets bad education then. Your child gets uh, trained to be passive. You're, they, and now in the, in the schools, they're teaching all kinds of crazy stuff. They're going to learn about you know how to be you know, all kinds of weird sex stuff and all kinds of crazy, horrible stuff. You're giving your child to strangers. Is it easier? I guess. But there's a big price, a terrible price.
Homeschooling, again, you are the master of your own family. You train, you teach, you educate your own children, and therefore they will be much better educated, much better at home. So it's the same idea. It's the same thing. You can see it in all areas of life. By the way, this is why I love, love, love. I want to give, uh, you know, we say, you can say a hat tip. Tipping your hat means like a compliment to Cole Robinson, who's just fantastic. I, 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 it seems I'm not going to be able to interview him. I've tried contacting him, inviting him, whatever. It doesn't matter. But um, I, I love this guy. I love this guy. He's fantastic. Snake Diet YouTube channel or BitChute. Because, of course, YouTube's trying to censor him and they don't let him make money online. All this stuff because he's telling the truth. But this guy is fantastic. Cole Robinson, Snake Diet. Snake Diet. Check it out. SnakeDiet.com. Snake Diet on YouTube or BitChute. And if you want to be healthy, if you want to be healthy, you want to you wanna be thin if you're fat and you want to lose weight, you need to listen to this guy. If, you, if you're already kind of thin, but you just feel you're weak, you're not very healthy, you need to listen to him. He is amazing, okay? And again, what is he teaching you? To be the master of your own body, the master of your own health. Not just following what some doctor says, not just following, you know, what, whatever your desire for food is, your food addiction but becoming the master of your own life, self using self-discipline, self-control, and then you will get amazing benefits. You don't have to become fat as you get older, right? This, there's this idea in the culture, uh, certainly in America, I don't know, maybe not other countries, but in America and Canada, really North America, there's uh, this idea that, oh, I'm getting older, that's why I'm fat. That is the biggest lie. It's the biggest, it's total, complete bullshit. You don't get fat because you get older. That, that is nonsense. Okay? Bec becoming older does not cause fatness at all. It's not the reason. You become fat because you become lazy. Because you eat bad, junky food too much and don't move your body enough. That's the cause of fatness. That's the cause of diabetes, right? So anyway, listen to this guy. He's wonderful. I, I love this guy. He shouts. He's crazy. His style is like the complete opposite of mine, right? He uses a lot of bad words. He curses a lot. Fuck shit. Goddamn. Fuck, 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 fuck. But it, people get, folk, get distracted by that. But the thing is, this guy is giving straight truth, okay? Honesty direct honesty and he's teaching you most of all about mindset about having a strong mindset that you are the master of your own health you can heal yourself you can make yourself thin and healthy you and only you so cole robinson snake diet the guy's fantastic give him some money too. donate to his super chat or something because youtube blocks a lot of his uh videos for won't let him make money so help this guy out yeah here we go perfect Here's kind of a, a book on the same topic recommendation from uh say eli carlos miranda dos santos says i'm reading in portuguese a book the title is the power of self-responsibility i already like the book because the title's great it's a really small book that tells us things we already know, right, but sometimes need to hear or hear to make a different attitude. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure you know what I'm saying right now, but we just need to hear it. Sometimes we need someone to yell it even <laughs> just to say, hey, stop blaming. Be the master of your own life. Wake up. It's great to read books like this. It just reminds you. It motivates you. It, why? It keeps your mindset strong because we're getting the opposite message all the time in the media from people around us, right? We get the opposite message constantly. Oh, you're a victim. Oh, you're passive. Oh, it's bad luck. It causes all your problems, right? So we're getting all these weak mindsets 
these messages constantly. So we have to balance that. We have to go against that by feeding our minds, feeding our ears, feeding our minds with these strong positive messages. So that's really great. Thanks for the book, uh, recommending that book and mentioning it. So read a lot of books like that constantly. Even if you know the information, it just reminds you. It helps to keep your mind strong. Listen to podcasts, read books that make this mindset stronger in you, that help you to stay strong, to think that you are the master and no one else. Uh, let's see. Chiggy S says, uh, I love you, AJ. Thank you. By the way, do you think speaking to yourself while looking at the mirror would work? Yeah, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Posting my speech to YouTube is terrifying. I understand. Uh, I haven't done it in another language either. But would that possibly help for acquiring fluency? You can do it. Yeah, it can. You can certainly, if you're brave, you can post it to uh, to YouTube. Maybe we can do that during our speaking challenge, which starts in February. Uh, that might be interesting. You know, uh, Steve Kaufman does that. That's a good idea, actually, Chiggy. You just gave me the idea. What we can do as part of our speaking challenge is make a video at the beginning. So February 1st or January 30th or something. Uh, talking to somebody. in For you, it'll be in English. And, you know, and don't worry about it. Maybe it'll be bad. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe your speaking sucks. Maybe it's terrible. Doesn't matter. That's why you're learning and improving. So just make a video and we, we can all share our videos. I can share a video of me barely speaking Japanese or something. And then we'll do our three months of practicing. And then at the end, we'll do another video and hopefully we see some improvement, right? Not perfection, but hopefully better. I, I like that idea. Let's do it. Then we can all do it. We can all feel bad together. <laughs> We can all feel a little embarrassed together. It's okay. Nothing to be afraid of. Ah, Minchet says, what should I do to be a master? Well, the number one thing is just take responsibility. Like the, like the name of that book that uh, Eli just, Eli just recommended is uh, just, it's, it's the, the first step is just uh, the mindset. The belief that you are the master of your own life, that you are responsible. And especially, I think the main thing is for the bad stuff. Of course, it's when good things happen, it's easy to say, ah, I'm great. Look at me. Ah, I'm successful because I'm so smart and I'm so great. <laughs> That's kind of easier to do. It feels good. But it's a lot harder when you have a failure, when you, the results are bad, and to say, it's my fault. I did it. It's because. I made bad decisions or I was lazy or whatever. So that I think that's the main thing is especially to take responsibility. If you're fat, it's your fault. You're fat because you're because you're lazy. Right? You made bad decisions and you're lazy. So just be honest about it. It's about being honest with yourself, right? I failed my first business. Why? Well, many different reasons, but it was my fault. Nobody else did it. I'm reading 200 word books, so kind of short books. I think it's a great way to learn. Could you comment on that? Reading, yes. Fantastic, wonderful. What, however, whatever you want to read, read it. You know, whatever works for you, it's a good level for you, you enjoy it. So if there's, you know, these kind of books, great. Graded readers that are at different levels, fine, fine, fantastic. Or, you know, native level books, you know, like, that are for native speakers, fantastic. Nonfiction, great. Fiction, great. Read, 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 read. Okay, so Aref says, I'm so sad because my speaking doesn't improve, hasn't improved. Well, so this is where this is a good opportunity. Why not? You have to figure it out. You're doing something wrong, right? You're doing something wrong. It should be improving. So why not? You have This is where about being responsible, being the master. You are the master of your learning. So you've got to figure out, what am I doing wrong? Maybe not enough hours. Maybe too difficult. Maybe you're using bad methods. 
Or maybe you're just not patient. Maybe you need more time. Maybe it's only been two months or three months and you need more time to improve and you just need to be more patient. That's one of my problems. I get very impatient. <laughs> so, and but again, it's my fault. So you've got to just figure it out. I don't know. You've got to look, examine what are you doing every day? What are you doing every week? And try to make some changes and see what happens. Varun is saying how to make a strong resolution, like a strong New Year's resolution. Probably in a few days I can do a whole show about goal setting and uh, we can review. I think a lot of you probably know the main ideas about setting goals, that you want your goal to be very specific and you want to have a deadline. That's important. That's a big one is to have a specific date, a time. That's why when we're with our challenges, right? It's a specific time period, not just always. Do a lot of hours because, uh, yeah, no, it's not, it's, it's not as motivating. But if you know, okay, I have three months, I have exactly 90 days or 92 days or something, and I'm going to, and you can, I'm going to enter the maximum hours every day, and you see everybody else is doing it. It's more motivating. So specific, something specific, not too general. And having a deadline also is very important, a specific date. I think shorter is better, generally. It's good to have a vision for your future, you know, big long term, of course. That's nice. But it's not motivating every day. It's a little, uh, for, to, to be motivated daily, I find that a shorter goals. So you, have to, you can have your big, big goal, you know, your big dream for the future, but you need to break it into smaller goals, right? If let's say you want to be a champion power lifter, right? Weightlifting. You want to be a gold medal in the Olympics. And right now you you're like my size. <laughs> right? Okay, that's a huge goal. You're going to need years to do that. It's not going to happen in a few months. So that can seem too big, right? It can actually hurt your motivation. So then what you need to do is that's great to have that dream, but you have to break it into smaller goals. And you have to figure out, okay, what do I need to do right now in the next three months? In three months, you're not going to go to the Olympics, but you need to start making improvements. Maybe you need to learn the technique for the different lifts, the different exercises. And just start with uh, light weights and work out three times a week, right? And you might even test your weight now, see how much you can lift on the different lifts and then set a goal that's a little higher. Not too high, but a little bit higher, and that's your three-month goal. At the, when you finish the three months, maybe you succeed, maybe you fail. doesn't matter, really, because then you create a new three-month goal. And then that's how you keep going in little pieces, going towards your big, big, big dream, which might you might need 10 years for the big dream. Yeah, this is interesting. This is, again, talking about a uh, cute kid in your picture, by the way. Gilmer says, when someone says English, the English language is hard to learn, I say it's all in the head. I just figured it out lately. When I try to relax and calm, calm down, I just empty my mind. I, it seems I'm able to speak fluently. Yeah, because you're what you're... It is a big piece of that, is, is the, the nervousness, the emotion... Uh, that when you can just let go of that and just relax, it certainly things will improve. This is why people, many people, you know, they kind of joke, but it's also true that they'll say, oh, if I have a drink, if I drink a beer, right, I can, I, my speaking improves. Well, that's why, because you're relaxing. The beer relaxes you. You're not nervous anymore. And you can just kind of uh, perform better. Ah, here we go. And like Car Carlos uh, found, is giving us the name of this book in English. The English title is called The Power of Action by Paulo uh, Vieira. 
I'll check it out. The Power of Action by Paulo Vieira. I'll probably read that one myself. Thank you. Cool. So here's the law's got a goal. I'm so grateful to you because your methods did work uh, for me, both in psychological and language learning sides. And recently I recognized which area I need to improve. Public speaking. Okay, great. So now pub Dalal has the goal of improving in public speaking. Fantastic. I guarantee you can do that. Okay, you take responsibility. And there are many different things you can do to practice and improve your public speaking. You will get better. You'll definitely get better. Um, it doesn't matter how bad you are now. Like I said, when I started, I was terrible. And I don't have a natural personality for doing it. But it doesn't matter if you just take responsibility, you can learn. Okay, uh, Nung Nguyen says, uh, do you think reading the whole series of Harry Potter will work? Yes. Uh, if it is, how can I make the best of those books? Just read and enjoy. That's all. Just read them. Read them all. Read all the Harry Potter when you're done with Harry Potter. Try Lord of the Rings. Try, if you like fantasy stuff, there, there are a huge number of uh, classic fantasy books. Um, there's one called the Amber series I really liked when I was uh, younger by the author, let me think, Roger Zelazny, I believe. He's got, he has some interesting books, kind of fantasy sci-fi. Of course, Tolkien's very famous. C.S. Lewis, famous, very famous ones. Just read a lot. All you do with reading, you're just doing it to enjoy it. You don't have to take notes. You don't, really don't have to do anything. Just read. Just read, 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 and enjoy the story, especially not uh, for fiction, rather, just fiction stories. Just read and enjoy the story. So read all the Harry Potter books. When you're done, read something else. That's it. Seb Sebastian's reading Harry Potter right now. He says, I'm reading Harry Potter now, the fourth book. Maybe it's not the best reading. No, it's great. It's great. But I like it and makes the experience more attractive. Exactly. The key thing with reading is that you enjoy it, that you're reading what you enjoy, okay? You don't have to read some super serious thing, right? You know, philosophy. You don't need to read Aristotle in English, okay? Just read what you enjoy. If you enjoy Harry Potter, read it. It's great. It's a lot of vocab you're getting in that. Any book like that. My Portuguese speaking is improving. Well, since I'm starting at zero, uh, Carlos, uh, it's easy to improve by one <laughs> to get. I'm just trying. I just use this. Try to pronounce it like Spanish is all I'm doing. OK, now here's another good point from Ganesh talking about to get good at something. You must know how it's measured. How do you suggest we measure progress? Right. There are different ideas with this. It depends on what you're doing. Some skills and areas of life are easy to measure. Like, so you're fat. Well, just get on a scale. It's, is it perfect? No, you know, of course, muscle is heavier, blah, blah, blah. But overall, if you have a lot of fat, you're probably going to, you'll see the scale getting, the, the weight getting lower and lower. Now, once you get thin and you start, if you start lifting weights and trying to build muscle, then the, the weight, you know, on the scale might start going up again, even though you're thin. Okay. So there are other things you can do that you measure the fat on your body. You can measure your waist, right? Around your waist, around your stomach. And you can see that getting smaller. Okay, just simple, simple stuff. I, I think for measurements, keep it simple. For language, I, I like just measuring hours because it's, it focuses you on what you need to do. Just hours of listening, hours of reading. And in February, we'll be doing hours of speaking. Simple, right? It doesn't stress you out. Anybody can do it. Right? Don't taking these tests like TOEFL, TOEIC, it just makes you stressed. They're not even very useful. So I don't recommend that kind of measurement because then you try to, then you're trying, you're not learning English, you're learning for the test. Okay? So just do measure your hours of English. Get an app. There's like, there's the one I use is called 10,000 Plus. It's a nice little app. It just measures, it measures anything. But uh, I just measure the hours I do. That's it. 
Just measure your hours. But anyway, yeah, it's nice to have some kind of measurement like that. You know, in uh, in Link, in, in Steve Kaufman's website, you can measure the number of words you know. It's useful too. Furkan recommending a book. I agree. It's a very nice book. No More Mr. Nice Guy is a good choice for reading. Yes, I like that book. It helped me. It helped me be a little less nice. <laughs> Paul Merenselk? Paul Merenselk? Paul Merenselk C? All right, a few more, and then I have to go. Oh, and he says, I really love C.S. Lewis as well. Yeah, C.S. Lewis has great books. He's got uh, fiction, fantasy books, which you know, they made movies for the, some of these books, the, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, maybe the most famous one. But C.S. Lewis also has some very, very nice nonfiction books on the topics of Christianity, a lot of really good ones. All right. Okay, let's go with Dan and as the final comment, and then I'm going to go. Dan says, I'm reading children's books. It's a great way to improve my vocabulary. Yes. For pronunciation, I'm using your pronunciation course. Excellent. And listening to a lot of English materials, mostly on YouTube. There you go. Now, see, this is what it looks like when you're the master of your own learning, right? He has decided he's creating his own curriculum. If you go to a school, they tell you what to do. Read this, do this. But when you're the master of your own learning, you decide and everyone will be a little different. So does Dan, who, who told Dan, who said to Dan, Dan, you must work on your pronunciation. Nobody did. Dan decided this. Dan decided I need to work on my pronunciation, so he bought my pronunciation course. He's doing my course. But he also wants to work on vocabulary, so he decided I'm going to do a lot of reading to work on that. And then for my listening, I want to focus on YouTube videos because I like those. Right? He created his own program. Right, because he's the master. He's responsible. That's why Dan's getting great results and will get continue to get great results. Right, so that's what I mean. Uh, you know, so of course he he bought one of my courses. Great, I'm glad to help. That's fantastic, and thank you for doing that. And uh, you can find you can find conversation partners. You can find others that will be helpful to you. But you're all you're the boss. That's the most important thing. You're the boss of your learning. You and what does it mean when you're the boss? It means you make all the decisions. You decide. You decide what you're going to do. And uh, you can get a teacher, but you you can hire them and like them. And then later you can say bye and find somebody else. So it's all up to you. You're the master of your own learning. You're the master of your own life in all areas of life. All right, guys, I'm going to go. Enjoy this day after Christmas. So lots of love to you. We'll be talking. We're going to be focusing a lot on motivation. In the next couple of weeks, you know, as the new year comes, we've, we're having a nice relaxing time at the end of the year. But then <clears throat> I'm going to be coming with some strong motivational shows. Also, my business English course, uh, VIP members, you already bought it. You had a chance to buy it with a discount. Well, now in January, everybody else, you can get my business English course. I'm going to send a discount code to you in January. Uh, so join my free email course at EffortlessEnglishClub.com and you get that course. I'll talk more about that too. We'll talk about career. We'll talk about success. We'll talk about goals. We'll talk about mindset. Lots of motivational stuff coming in January and at the end of this year. Until then, love to you. See you next time. Bye for now.